Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise. I recently passed my BCBA exam, and now every Sunday I make videos for you. I call them Study Sundays to help you pass your exam as well. Today we're going to talk about non contingent reinforcement. <music> Hey guys, and welcome back. Like I said, today we're going to talk about non-contingent reinforcement. Okay, ready? Wait for it. NCR, non-contingent reinforcement, is actually not a reinforcement procedure. It's not actually reinforcement because it doesn't increase a behavior. So what non-contingent reinforcement is, is an antecedent modification that's used to make a reinforcer less desirable so a child will not engage in that behavior. And the reason being, and not making it more desirable, but making the desire less for the child to engage in it because they're getting it no matter what. So let's say that a child engages in attention-seeking behavior. So let's say they're constantly calling out or running around a classroom or making jokes and it's very inappropriate and disruptive to the classroom. So using an NCR procedure, what you're trying to do is satiate the desire for attention by providing attention non-contingent on any sort of behavior proactively before the behavior occurs. Well, why would you do that? And I said I made a little mistake. It's not that you're making the desire, the reinforcement less desirable, but you're making the behavior itself unnecessary because the child is getting access to what they require without engaging in the behavior. So it's super easy to do. Um, people really, really like this procedure, especially in a classroom because it's easy and you're avoiding the behavior that's disruptive from taking place or the behavior you don't want to see from taking place in the first place. So non-contingent reinforcement, what it is, it's always time-based. So what you can do is you can either use a variable variable time schedule, meaning about every 30 minutes you provide the child with reinforcement or about every five minutes you provide the child with that reinforcement and then, or it could be right an exact interval where exactly every five minutes and exactly every 30 minutes. In real life, it's almost always the variable schedule of, inter, um, of reinforcement. So what you'll do is you'll find out how often a child engages in a behavior. So let's go back to the calling out in the classroom. Let's just say that a child on average engages in a disruptive behavior every single seven minutes and that's seeking attention. So you tell the teacher, okay, you're going to use non-contingent reinforcement. Again, this is not actually reinforcement, but you're delivering the object of reinforcement, which is attention. So you're going to say, okay, well, it has to be, if the child's engaging in the behavior every seven minutes, you have to deliver the thing that the child wants, the attention, more frequently than that. So let's say every six minutes. So you tell the teacher, hey, listen, if the child's engaging in attention-seeking behavior every seven minutes and you don't want them to do that, well, roughly every six minutes, give the child attention. Then they won't need to engage in that disruptive behavior. So this is a really great procedure. Now, it does come with a risk, and that is that if a child is gaining access to this reinforcement non-contingently, meaning they don't have to do anything about it, there's two things that could happen that could potentially cause an issue. Number one, when you're delivering that reinforcement, that thing that the child wants, you can inadvertently reinforce a behavior you don't want to see, especially if you're using an exact interval where you're saying, okay, exactly every five minutes, we're going to deliver reinforcement as soon as that timer goes off. Well, regardless of what the child's doing, they're supposed to get re that reinforcement. So that could be a problem if right before um, the timer goes off, the child's engaging in the behavior you don't want to see, which is why I never use exact reinforcement. I always say, we're, I never use exact intervals for anything. I always say we're going to use approximately, right, variable intervals, about every five minutes. That way it gives that teacher or the therapist or the parent a little bit more discretion. The other thing about it is that if a child is gaining access to reinforcement without doing anything, sometimes what happens is it creates a ratio strain issue where the child doesn't want to engage in any sort of work or any sort of effort to in, get a reward later on or get a reinforcement later on. So that could potentially be an issue. But overall, this is a super effective procedure. Now you also do need to pair this with another procedure. This is a, some sort of differential reinforcement. Again, this is an antecedent modification. It's called non-contingent reinforcement, but it is not actually reinforcement. It is an antecedent modification. So always, always pair it with a um, differential reinforcement procedure. And that may be something you see in your exam. That can you use it alone? And no, you cannot use it alone. So I really hope this video has been helpful for you. Like I said, I'm making these videos every single Sunday. If there's a question you have you want me to answer, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. There's a contact form on there. Simply fill it out and maybe the next question will be yours. Have an amazing week studying and I'll see you on the next video.